hello and uh, thanks to the organizers, to um, Alina, Michael, and Philip for inviting me. Um, the work uh, I'm going to talk about is based actually on two papers, one of which is a joint with Martin Orr and Yuri Zarhin, and another with Martin Orr. So uh, we consider a billion varieties in K-free surfaces um, of a number of fields. And the aim is to explore um, various conjectures in the literature and logical links between them. Uh, so these conjectures state that certain variants take only finitely many values when the degree of the number field is bounded. And in case of abelian varieties, we also want the dimension to be bounded. And okay, the notation is mostly standard. Um, K is, is going to be most of the time a number field with algebraic closure K bar, um, gamma is the absolute Galois group, and X bar um, for a variety X over K denotes the same variety of our algebraic closure of um, K bar. So just a word about the terminology, a lattice in this talk means a free finely generated abelian group with a non-degenerate integral symmetric bilinear form on it. And let me start with a conjecture, which is um, due to Robert Coleman. I think he never published this conjecture as, uh, as far as I know, but this is mentioned in several places in the literature. So I believe this probably was done around 1990, but maybe earlier, maybe later. And the, the, it is stated as follows. So fix two positive integers, D and G, and consider all abelian varieties, a of dimension G defined to the number fields of degree G. Or if you prefer, we consider a variety of dimension at most G defined to the number fields of degree at most D. It doesn't make any difference. Then uh, there are only finitely many isomorphism classes among the rings um, and A bar. So the ring of and A bar means the endomorphisms of the abelian variety A bar, which is um, uh, the same as A, but considered over K bar. You can state equivalent versions of the same conjecture by replacing the endomorphisms of the billion variety of the algebra of an algebraic closure of K by simply by the endomorphisms of A, which is of course the same as Galo invariant part of um, uh, the endomorphism of A bar. I thought, so I'll just take this opportunity to ask a question posed by Bjorn Putin in the, the chat. And the question is, does, does a Coleman conjecture reduce to the case D equals one by a restriction of scalars? So for to, to the rational field. Oh, can we reduce the Coleman conjecture to the case of the ground field by restriction of scalars? I don't know. Uh, it's a good question. I need to think. Uh, um, at the moment, I, 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 I can't say anything, sorry. <laughs> okay, so let me just continue. So uh, one motivation for, the, for this work was um, uh, the result of uh, Gaël Raymond, who proved uh, that Coleman's conjecture implies the uniform boundedness of um, uh, torsion subgroups of of groups of k point of abelian variety, well, of course, of bounded dimension, which is a well-known hard conjecture. So Coleman's conjecture is very hard. Um, it also implies that um, the boundedness of the minimal degree of an isogeny between isogenous abelian varieties. Okay. So I'm sorry for this terrible, please move this middle away, but um, it's, uh, it, Anyway, so sometimes it does move away, but anyway. Okay, now let me talk about K-free surfaces. The situation is to a certain extent similar and a, a replacement for, uh, for the endomorphisms of an abelian variety is an neuron severity group. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to argue that there is some similarity between the two. So, um, so the neuron severity group of a, of a K-free surface is a lattice so it's, it's the same as the Picard group of X bar. And um, 
it has a natural bilinear form given by intersection pairing, which is non-degenerate. Um, so we get a lattice of rank at most 20. And uh, Shafarevich, in one of his last published papers, stated um, a conjecture which is sort of morally similar to Coleman's conjecture. So let's fix a positive integer d. Then there are only finitely many lattices L up to isomorphism, for which there exists a K-free surface defined over a number field of degree d with uh, neuron severity lattice isomorphic to this lattice L. And in his paper, he says that Sarah told him about Coleman's conjecture. So this is one of the sources that we, um, we know that um, um, Coleman did make his conjecture like this. Um, so Shafarich was aware of Coleman's conjecture when he was stating that. And okay, we can um, state equivalent versions. Um, so one way of um, talking about this is to replace lattice by its discriminant. So we know that there are only finitely many um, lattices of bounded discriminant and bounded rank. And therefore, um, an equivalent way of stating this conjecture would be to say that if, if, the extent, if the degree of the number field K is bounded, then the discriminant of the neuron severity lattice is bounded. And we can replace, if you like, the neuron severity by its Galois equivariant um, sublattice, or by um, by the Picard group of X, which is um, a subgroup of finite index in neuron severity invariant under Galois. And it, it's it's possible to show that all these versions are equivalent. Now let me explain that. Um, uh, so I mentioned that the two conjectures are uh, kind of similar. Let me explain how to restate Coleman's conjecture in terms of lattices. So consider uh, the tensor project, tensor product of the endomorphism of A with Q. This is uh, a semi-simple algebra of a Q. So it can be written as the direct sum of simple components, which are algebras of matrices, um, with entries in some division algebra di. So if we call ki the center of di, then we can define uh, the reduced trace as follows. So on each simple component, uh, we have uh, the usual reduced trace of a center of simple algebra from the matrix algebra with entries in di to capital ki, to the, to the ki. And, and then we can compose this with the, the usual trace from the finite field extension Ki of Q to Q and take the sum of all simple components. So we call this, let's call this the reduced trace. And then um, it's, it's, it's clear that, okay, that the, ring and the, uh, the endomorphous ring of A is an order in this semi-simple um, Q algebra, endomorphous tensors with Q. Um, the ranks are bounded. Yes. And the important thing is that the value of the trace on the endomorphism of A gives us integers. So, uh, and, it, and it turns out that uh, we do get a lattice, so that we get a non degenerate symmetric integral bilinear form given by a trace, trace of xy on the endomorphism of A. And and thus we can uh, restate the conjecture. So, so, so we can define the discriminant of A as the discriminant of this integral form on the endomorphisms. And an equivalent version of Coleman's conjecture says that if the degree of the field and the dimension of abelian varieties are bounded, then the discriminant of this form is bounded. So both conjectures uh, of Coleman and of Shafarevich can be stated as conjectures about certain integers which should be bounded provided that degree of found number field and the dimension case for building varieties are both bounded. Okay, now let me move on to, uh, to third group of conjectures. So there'll be more conjectures now in, in, in a minute. And this uh, remaining conjectures will concern the Brouwer group. So the Brouwer group 
is understood that the cohomological Brouwer group, so it's the second tall cohomology group of, uh, of a schema X with coefficients in the tall she, uh, the multiplicative uh, group. So um, the situation of our K bar is quite clear. So it, I mean, after Gross and Dick, these things are well known. So let's assume um, that K is a field of characteristic zero. Um, and let raw be the picon number, that is the rank of the neuron severity group. So for an abelian variety A over K, the Brouwer group of A bar is described as, uh, as in the picture. So this is the product of a certain number, finitely many copies of Q mod Z. And namely you need to take, I mean, so using Kummer exact sequence, you, you, you need to take um, basically the rank of the second um, cohomology group minus the rank of the neuron severity. Um, so this is how many copies you need to take. And when we're talking about a K-free surface X, then um, the Brouwer group of X bar looks similar. So it's a product of a number of copies of Q mod Z, namely you need to take um, 22 minus rho. So 22 is, a, is the rank um, of the second cohomology group of a K-free surface. Okay. and um, it is known now that if X is an abelian variety or a K3 surface defined over a finitely generated field of characteristic zero or of positive characteristic, then the Galois invariant subgroup of the Brouwer group of X bar is finite. And uh, with, with the caveat that if characteristic is positive, then uh, we stay away from P torsion characteristic P. So, so it's like modulo the, the, the p parameter torsion subgroup. So this is due to myself and, and, and Zarin in, um, and, and also to Kazuhiro Ito. Uh, for, so Kazuhiro Ito did the same for characteristic p equal to two uh, in the case of k free surfaces. Okay, so let me now state a conjecture made by Tony Varela Varado uh, a few years ago. So he said um, that, so it's like a conjecture. That if, if we fix a positive integer D and we fix an isomorphism, fix a lattice cell, then if X is a K-free surface defined over a number field of degree D such that its neuron severity lattice is isomorphic to L, then the size of the Galois in invariant subgroup of the Brouwer group of X bar is, is bounded. Okay, so, um, well, of course, it's not very hard to make conjectures. So if, I mean, we look at this and we might as well say, let's state a stronger conjecture. Let's omit the reference to Elachis. Um, I mean, so here's, here's what we get. Uh, if, if, if we need more conjectures, then it's quite easy to produce them. So, so let's, let's state this conjecture as follows. Let D be positive integer. Then for any K-free surface defined over a number field of degree D or at most D, um, the size of the Gala invariance of group of Brouwer X bar is bounded. And once we are talking about this sort of thing, let's, let's make the same conjecture for abelian varieties. So, okay, I will label this conjecture Brouwer of, of K3 and Brouwer of AV. Okay, so the conjecture is what you expect. We fix D and G. And then there's a constant depending only on D and G such that for any abelian variety of dimension G defined of a number field of degree at most D or, or equal to D, the size of the Galois um, invariant part of Brouwer A bar is bounded. And the main results could be stated as, as this diagram of logical um, links. So we have implications um, as follows. So so, so the genuine results here are, are three implications in the middle and in the left, and because the um, the implication in the right hand side is a triviality. So it's quite it's quite obvious that if you combine the conjecture of Shafarevich and conjecture of Varevarado, then um, we automatically get we, we get the uniform boundedness of um, Galois invariance of groups of Brouwer groups of K three surfaces. 
so the, so the right hand side of this diagram is is more like a joke so let's concentrate on on, on the middle part of the diagram and, and and the left side so um so the left side of this picture is the world of abelian varieties and there the result is that coleman's conjecture implies the boundedness of brow groups of abelian varieties so I decided against <laughs> uh, going into the proof of this because it's, uh, it's, it's rather involved. And um, the middle implications go from statements about abelian varieties to statements about K-free surfaces. And they are based on, um, okay, so, and they are based on the uniform Kugusataki construction. So Kugusataki construction has been uh, uh, exploited quite a lot recently. So in the original paper of Kugusataki, this was a purely transcendental construction, which produces an abelian variety of our complex numbers from complex K-free surface. But, uh, but then there was the, the extremely important work of Delin um, about the veil conjectures for K-free surfaces. Uh, and, and sort of modern incarnations of the same construction uh, are stated in terms of Shimura varieties, uh, which are closely related to the modular space of K3 surfaces with a given polarization. And, uh, and modular spaces of uh, abelian varieties with a certain polarization. So the important thing in, in proving the, of, in, in the proof of this sort of horizontal um, implications was to make the Google stack construction uniform so that it doesn't depend on the degree of polarization. So we don't need to treat like infinitely many moduli spaces. So morally, this is a, some sort of replacement for Zarkin's uh, quaternion trick for abelian varieties, which is extremely useful because it allows to prove results for abelian varieties with some polarization if, if, if similar results are known for principally polarized abelian varieties. So in the case of K-free surfaces, this is based on lattices. So this construction uses um, embeddings of lattices into bigger lattice. So basically, one, what one does is uh, one looks at all possible um, polarizations of K-free surfaces, all possible degrees, so basically all even numbers, and corresponding lattices are embedded into one um, into one ambient lattice, and then uh, the Kugusaki construction is um, applied to this um, just kind of one lattice, one, one uh, hot, with this hot structure, which takes care of all polarization simultaneously and produces some sort of abelian varieties. Um, so that's um, that's basically how it works. Um, so this has been worked out in uh, in a joint paper with Martin Orr and independently in the paper by Xi. Okay. So some other comments are that um, Coleman's conjecture is known in dimension one and it follows from the brower ziegel theorem. And uh, another comment is that all the conjectures mentioned in this diagram are, are true in, in the CM case. And uh, I will talk about this in, in in the later part of this talk. All right, so that's the main result of um, like the, of the main part of the talk. Uh, let me now say that, of course, if um, if we find this conjecture is difficult, as we do, then we might uh, want to consider not all abelian varieties, but maybe abelian varieties in specific families, and maybe K3 surfs in specific families. So what is known in, the, in, in this direction is that, for example, if we, if we go just all the way through, just look at one parameter families, then conjectures of Coleman and Shafarevich hold. Um, so, so, so they hold for one parameter families. And this is not so hard to deduce from the results of um, Kadore and Tamagawa and, and results of Hui. Another result uh, of another result of Cadorin and, and Francois Charles uh, is uh, about one parameter families of K-free surfaces. So if let's fix the prime number L and consider 
not the not what we want to consider, but but just the L primary torsion subgroup of Brouwer X bar invariant under Galois. Then this number, which we know is finite, is uh, bounded in in an arbitrary one parameter family of K-free surfaces. That's what they prove. Alexei, we have a question in the chat. Yeah. We too, you want to unmute and ask away? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, uh, well, let's see. Or I could. Oh, uh, hi. Sorry. I, I was just wondering about your construction. So uh, I think Bjorn typed some response. Um, I was just wondering if you apply your construction to K3 and then you apply Kuga Satake, do you recover Zarin's trick on abelian variety? Not at all. No, 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 no. It's no. completely different. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, what we do is uh, a construction with lattices, you see? So, so you look at K-free surfaces of fixed polarization degree. So it's, it's some even number. And then um, uh, the second cohomology group, the second complex cohomology group of the K-free surface is a particular lattice of rank yes. 22. Okay, so we are even lattice in, you know, we, we know its structure. Now, the polarization is a class in this lattice. So what we need to talk about when so when we um, we we need to deal with the uh, the polarized Hodge structure. So this uh, means that we need to talk about the orthogonal complement to the polarization in the K-free lattice. So this gives us a sub lattice of rank twenty one um, and absolute value of discriminant. You know uh, the degree of polarization. And what we do is, I mean, using some results of Nikulin, which are, you know, so Nikulin created this very nice theory of lattices, and then you can embed these lattices into one. So for every degree of polarization, you embed them into some lattice. It doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter which one. You could, I think you can take a lattice of rank 25. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, in paper, we, I mean, some rank, some fixed rank. And and then you, you have a K-free sorry, you have a Hodge structure of K-free type on this given lattice. And then you look, and then you kind of imitate everything that you do. You create, um, I mean, look at modular space of Hodge structures uh, on this. On, so you just need to run uh, the Kugelsaki construction kind of once for one modular space of K-free. So and then you just need to consider a given Shimura variety, you know. Um, of orthogonal type. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. then you and then you you, you apply Kosaki, and then you land in the world of abelian varieties. So you get like um, a modular space of abelian varieties of some dimension with um, yeah, like fi fixed polarization. Th th that's how it works. Okay. So, okay. So, so, so it has nothing to do with Zarkin's trick, strictly speaking. What I meant, what I wanted to say, is that it plays morally the role of Zarkin's trick because. It uh, allows us to, instead of considering like one polarization at a time, to consider them all simultaneously. Okay. Okay. So, oh, uh, so like actually, so Bjorn commented on in the chat saying that every K three is related via Kuga Satake to some abelian variety, but not vice versa. But I, my question was, I was wondering if it re like somehow recovers Zarin's trick. When you mm. only look at the what the abelian, no, no, we only go in one direction. From... No, we go from K3 okay. to abelian. I mean, the construction goes from K3 to abelian, right? It, it doesn't go back <laughs> in a way, okay? Okay, right. so 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 it allows you to deduce results about K3s if you know them already for abelian varieties. Oh, but not okay, not the step, but, okay, not, I... but not, not the other, it's not, not in the other direction, okay? Okay, All right. thanks, thanks for <laughs> sure. the clarification. Yeah, no problem. So, any other questions? If... Um, okay. Uh, yes, in fact, Carlo Caspari had a question. Um, okay. Carlo, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, the question is um, is just written. Is uh, in this this in this uh, results by Kadure and Tamagawa and Charles the the families are complete or or you you can allow bad reduction. Uh, I think it doesn't matter. You just look at uh, open curves and then, um, no, it, it doesn't matter. No, they, they don't have to be complete. Okay, thank you. Mm, sure. All right. So, and the last result I wanted to mention, uh, sorry. Yeah, 
yeah, just a, speaking about one parameter family, so I would like to mention another result uh, due to Vara, Alvarado, and, and Virai, uh, who produced explicit bounds for the size of the Galois invariant part of Brower X bar for specific families, um, for specific one parameter families of K free surfaces. Okay, so, so things are definitely easier if uh, you restrict to specific families. Okay, so as I told you, I decided against going in deeper in, into technicalities. So uh, what I plan to do now is to talk about the CM case. So I mentioned uh, earlier, let me just go back, that these conjectures uh, are known to hold in the CM case. And let me just maybe uh, uh, spend some time talking about the previous paper, which is a joint work with um, Martin Orr. So, um, so we prove like three main results there, theorem A, theorem B, and theorem C. Theorem A says that um, there are only finitely many. So if you, if you can't see my screen because of this, uh, please move this window away, which we can't move away, it's Q bar, it's not Q there. <laughs> um, I hope this will move away for a second. To make to make the bar appear, yeah, okay, here we go. So there are only fine to many Q bar isomorphism classes of abelian varieties of CM type of given dimension, which can be defined over number fields of given degree. So this result is in fact not very hard to prove because uh, uh, as a, so, so we did use it as a rather quick consequence of the result of, of Zimmerman. So using standard tools like uh, classical bounds of massive Wusholtz for the minimum degree of isogeny between the building varieties and, and, and classical Zarkin's quaternion trick. So we did use it from result of Zimmerman who produced a lower bound for the size of gala orbits of CM points. So th this, these things are well known to the, to the experts. Uh, just one word. So this is uh, a consequence um, of the average Kalmus conjecture proved by Andreata Goran Howard, Madapu Supera, and also by Yuang Zhang. Um, so this theorem A, as I say, this is not so hard to deduce from, um, from Zimmerman, Zimmerman's result. And of course, as a immediate corollary, you get that Kalmus conjecture holds for CM abelian varieties. Great. Um, and next, I would like to, so this is not so well known. Maybe I will remind you the definition of a CM uh, K-free surface. So a K-free surface X is, uh, has complex multiplication if its Mumford-Tait group is commutative. So if you're, if you're not sure what Mumford-Tait group is, let me not define it, but I'll give you an equivalent definition. So consider uh, the transcendental lattice of um, uh, my K-free surface X when I consider it over complex numbers. So we need to fix some embedding of uh, the field of diffusion into complex numbers. And then T of XC is the transcendental lattice. So by definition, this is the orthogonal complement to the neuron severity lattice inside a uh, second uh, classical com complex cohomology group, a second Betty cohomology group of X, of XC. So that's a transcendental lattice. It carries a Hodge structure of K3 type. And um, we can consider the endomorphisms of this lattice tensored with Q. So this is a, um, a Q Hodge structure. Um, so we can consider its endomorphism, which respect the Hodge structure. Okay, and the condition, uh, I mean, the definition of a K3 surface of CM type is that this, um, Hodge endomorphism ring is a CM field. So it's a pure imaginary quadratic extension of a purely um, of totally real field. Uh, and there's a second part in the definition. We need also to require that when we look at um, this rational transcendental lattice as a vector space over, over, over this CM field E, then it has dimension one. So, so if both of these conditions hold, then we say that uh, okay, three surface has complex multiplication. 
So these uh, surfaces have been introduced by Petersky, Shapiro, and Shafarevich soon after they proved the Torelli theorem for K-free surfaces in, in a different paper. I think it was 1973. And they proved in that paper that every K-free surface with complex multiplication can be defined over a number field. And so these standard examples include K-free surfaces of maximal possible Picard rank, which is 20. In this case, the transcendental lattice is of rank two. So it's a, uh, an imaginary, so, so when you tensor it with Q uh, and look at endomorphism, this uh, becomes, this is the imaginary um, quadratic field. Also, uh, we can look at, we, can, we have examples uh, given by Kuma surfaces uh, attached to CM abelian surfaces, but um, th this always have um, Picard rank uh, at least um, 18, but Lenny Talman proved that in fact, for every even value of um, the Picard rank, there exist um, K3 surfaces with complex multiplication. So in fact, there are many, many others, and we just don't know how to make them explicit, if you like, so. Okay, so the results in, in the K3 case are as follows. Uh, so theorem B says that there are only finitely many Q bar, again, when this annoying window will disappear, you'll see the bar. Yeah, there are only finitely many Q bar isomorphism classes of K3 surfaces with CM, that can be defined over number of fields of um, given degree. Um, and again, this follows from theorem A uh, in, in a way that I just described. So when I was talking about the uniform Kugusaki construction, it's in fact has been um, created to, to deduce theorem B from theorem A. Okay, I think I've, I've explained how this works to, to a large extent. Uh, so in his paper, uh, where Shafarevich stated his conjecture, which I mentioned in the beginning of the talk, this is a 1996 paper. Uh, Shafarevich proved this in the case of K-free surfaces of maximal Picard rank 20. Um, so this, this was um, the starting point of our, of our investigation. Let me also mention that Domenico Valloni uh, has given an easier proof. Uh, so so it's, it's sort of annoying that to prove these results, uh, we rely on, on, on this massive work that went to the proof of um, average Kolmes conjecture. So in fact, there are like essentially easier, or maybe I should say even to some extent elementary proofs, but well, not really elementary, I mean, based on, on something, but, but on much less. So Domenico Valonic has found an easier proof in the case um, but it's unfortunately not completely general. It, it works in the case of uh, CM by the ring of integers of, of this field E, of the reflex field. It's, it's not, um, uh, um, um, it, it doesn't seem to work in the case where we have complex multiplication by some order um, in, in that field. But nevertheless, it's, it, it, maybe, maybe it's possible to find an easier proof, um, that would be nice. Okay. And as a, an immediate consequence of theorem B, we, we, we obtain the corollary that Shafarevich's conjecture holds for K3 surfaces with CM. Okay. Um, I mean, the next result is actually is not about complex multiplication. So let me, um, uh, so, so this result is about forms um, of varieties and their Brouwer groups. So let's consider a smooth projective geometrical integral variety X defined over a number, sorry, not of a number field, but okay, we can allow it to be defined more generally over a finitely generated uh, field of a Q. So, so in characteristic zero, but finitely generated. I recall the well-known definition of a form. So it's a standard definition. So a variety Y of a field L, which is an extension of K contained in, in a given algebraic closure, is called K bar of a L form of X. If the base change of the ground field from L to K bar makes it isomorphic to X bar. 
So, so these are varieties which become isomorphic to X over K bar. All right, the standard definition of a form. And, and using work of many, many, many people, including Kadore, Monen, Kret, and Kev, Andre, and others, uh, uh, we, we prove in this paper with Martin Orr the following theorem. So theorem C, let me state it for abelian varieties with CM or arbitrary K-free surfaces with or without CM. So it says that in this case, um, for, for, for each positive integer N, there is a constant depending on N and X, such that for every form Y of X defined over L, which is an extension of K of degree at most 10, the size of the Galois invariant subgroup of Brouwer Y bar is bounded by this constant. So this is a little hard to understand, but I think it already makes sense to think about this in the case where L is equal to K. So in this case, N is one, and I'm just talking about all K bar over K forms of um, my given variety X. So this is just the usual forms of X over the same field over which X is defined. So, and then we say that in, in the case of abelian varieties with complex multiplication or arbitrary k free surfaces, if we look at, at, this, at all possible forms of, of the same field, then the size of the Galois invariant part of the Brouwer group is, is bounded. Now, why, why is this um, a difference between arbitrary K-free services and the building rights with CM? So in fact, the result that we prove is slightly stronger. It holds whenever the variety satisfies the so-called integral Mumford tate conjecture. And uh, let me not uh, sort of maybe just, just try to define it. Uh, let, me, let me just say that um, if an abelian variety satisfies the usual Mumford Tate conjecture, then by result of Kadare and Monin, uh, it satisfies its integral version. So, and then uh, the Mumford Tate conjecture is known for CM abelian varieties. On the other hand, the Mumford Tate conjecture by work of Tankev and Andre is known for K free surfaces. And that's why, um, and that's why this theorem is um, stated for. CM abelian varieties and arbitrary k surfaces. Okay, so let me let me kind of illustrate what I'm. So maybe it's a little obscure. I mean, since I'm talking about forms, let me illustrate uh, this result in one particular case. So here's a here's a straightforward result. I mean, like like a, like a, the first thing one can think of when uh, um, talking about forms. So if I consider the Fermat quartic surface, so the sum of four fourth powers equals zero um, in B3, then I can also consider arbitrary diagonal quartic surfaces uh, by taking arbitrary, arbitrary non-zero coefficients, A, B, C, D. Um, and, and these are of course forms because this to, um, I mean the surface with coefficients and the surface with coefficients all equal to one become isomorphic over some finite extension of K. So these are forms. So this theorem says that, um, and, and of course there are like, if your field is uh, the field of rational numbers, then there are infinitely many forms. Um, and, and, and this theorem says in this particular case that uh, the size of the Galois invariant part of the Brouwer group is bounded for all the forms. And this can be used to deduce that um, all the Brouwer group um, when I consider it modular, the image of the Brouwer group of, of the ground field, um, then, then, this, then this is also finite and, and the size of this is bounded. So of course, this is the fact that Fermat quartic surface is a K-free surface. So um, in this particular case, since I'm talking about the situation, then um, sharp explicit bounds are known in this case when K is Q or Q of square root of minus one. So this, this is work of many people and uh, concluding the recent paper that I wrote with Dominic Wirtz. Maybe it's a good time to answer questions. I see there are... There are two questions in the chat, yes. Yeah. Maybe, uh, Yuixu, maybe you unmute uh, and ask away. 
Oh, um, I, I was just asking about the proof of the previous theorem. Ah. Like, do, do you use this Tankeev lemma, which uh, identifies the, like the special Montfortet group with, I think, a restriction of scalar of some symplectic group or something? Um, like in this proof, because you said you use the work of Tankeev and Andre. No, no, the word of Tankeev and Andre is just used uh, because. I mean, we, we just use the fact that the Manfred Tate conjecture is known for K three surfaces, our um, fine tangent fields of a Q. So that, that's that's we, we just we just use this result. Okay. So, so, okay. The, so the proof works quite generally, as I said. The proof works quite generally for arbitrary varieties. Uh, um, so let let me just quote. Um, okay. So maybe I should maybe I should state it in the more general. Okay. So I think um, we need to know that X satisfies the integral Mumford Tate conjecture. That's all we need to know. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, I don't know of very many cases when this is known. So this is known for um, abelian varieties satisfying the usual Mumford Tate conjecture and infocapture surfaces. But um, I mean, the, it, maybe I'm not really um, an expert, but maybe there are other cases known. But uh, those were the two cases which um, seem to be quite well known somehow. I see. Okay. Okay. But but like in your proof, do you need like a very explicit description of the Montfort Tate group or the special Montfort Tate group? No. No. Okay. No. Okay. So no. maybe no. it's not. Yeah, it's not the, the no. result. No, no. I was okay. Thanks. Any other questions? So um, there are two more questions, but maybe let's defer them to the end of the talk. That's fine. Is okay. that okay? Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, okay. So um, I'd like also to mention that uh, theorem C is also valid in characteristic P. If you consider the result modulo um, P torsion, and this is due to Emiliano Ambrosi. Okay, and um, actually, I'm. I think I've. I'm. I'm gradually coming to the end of my talk, so we'll we'll have plenty of time um, for questions and discussion. So if we if we just combine theorems A and C, that what we get is um, the result I stated about abelian varieties of CM type. So, so fix positive integers n and g, then there is a constant C, depending on only on n and g, such that the size of the Galois invariant part of the Brau group of x bar, where x, bar, where x is any form of an abelian variety. So it could be an abelian variety or it could be a torsor. Um, that's fine. Um, this is allowed. So. So, so when, when it's an abelian variety with CM of dimension G, um, and X is defined over a um, number field of degree N, then, then we have this bound, they have this uniform bound. And a similar result, of course, holds for k 3 surfaces. So for any positive integer N, there is a constant depending only on N, such that the size of the Galois um, invariant part of the bra group of X bar for any um, K3 surface X with CM defined over number field K of degree N is bounded by a constant that depends only on N. So yeah, I think this finishes my little survey and yeah, maybe maybe we'll, we'll have, um, yeah, we'll have time for, yeah, for many questions, so.